The Smart 16 aims to be the Goldilocks of nano quads, pitching that 2S will be just right between the 1 and 3S nanos. So let's find out because in this video we're going to go through the specifications, what's in the box, flight test, how it performed and how it compares to the other nanos. The Smart 16 is fighting for supremacy in the nano segment. Now if you don't know what nano quads are, well, you basically take a whoop and put it on a miniature carbon frame without the prop guards. You get all the fun of the whoop except it can also fly outdoors. Well. Sort of. Gepar C have won for every size in the micro market. All the quads in the Smart Series follow the same design language. In the box, you're going to get a range of different goodies. You're going to get two TPU battery mounts, two battery straps, M2 5mm screws, M2 3mm screws, M2 dampeners, and M1.4 3mm motor screws, and this is something manufacturers don't include, and one M2 nylon nut, stickers, a help card, screwdriver, and an Allen key. The Smart 16 is limited to analog only, and it's just too small to fit a Vista or even HD0. It has a 16x16 16 16 mini tower, which comprises of a 12 amp BL Heli S ESC, an F411 flight controller running Betaflight 4.2.11, a 200mW VTX, and a Cadex Ant camera. Motors are 0803 11000 kV, and they're paired with Gemfan 1610 Biblade props. You also get a choice of receivers. Express Low Rest comes in 900MHz and 2.4GHz. Crossfire is available. D8 or D16 for you FR Sky people, and there's also a plug and play option. Now, I went with ELRS 2.4 GHz, and it came with what appears to be the Happy Model EP2RX. And when I flashed Express LRS to the receiver, I used the Happy Model EP2RX target, and it seemed to work just fine. Now, GEP RC want you to fly with two 1S 450mAh batteries, and they give you a Series PH 2.0 connector. Now, I had to have a think about what would make you want to buy a 2S quad and use it with 1S batteries. The logic I came up with was to be different in the market and to try to get you to buy the Smart 16 when you're upgrading from a Whoop without having to invest in new batteries. And they also probably figured that someone like myself would just cut off and put an XT30 connector, which is exactly what I did. So let's head out to the track. Now, one of the key things I noticed when flying this was it's really, really different in terms of flight capabilities to the 1S as well as the 3 to 4S options on the market. When I was flying 1S quads like the Firefly 1S, it just didn't have enough power to be able to pull off all the different freestyle and basic maneuvers. It required a lot of effort on the throttle and getting on that a lot early to be able to pull out of something like a simple power loop. And that was the same with all the 3 to 4S options on the market. They all spin bigger motors and are designed or trying to pitch themselves as a nano cinema quad. And for someone like me who just wants to get out and fly and doesn't necessarily want to try and do cinema, uh, these 3 to 4S quads just don't have enough capabilities to again pull off the basic maneuvers. So then you're stuck with something where perhaps like GEP RC we're thinking, 2S is the most viable option. And when flying the Smart 16, it had all the capabilities that I was expecting. It had a lot of throttle resolution, it had a lot of power, and the power to weight ratio, even though we're running 40 millimeter props, was still there. It seems that 2S with the 11,000 kV motors provides the right balance that you need to be able to fly. Being able to do things like split S's and punch outs and flips and rolls as well as power loops, it just really took on anything that I wanted to throw at it. Now bear in mind I'm no Mr. Steel and I don't have a big arsenal of freestyle tricks under my belt, but seem to be able to rip around an area just fine on my own. And this is where we start to get into some of the things that you want to consider about this. If you're looking to fly in a big open space, this really isn't the quad for you because the 40 millimeter props don't do so well when you're out in the open. There just isn't enough propeller to deal with anything more than a small breeze. But in saying that, flying around a playground or ripping around trees is going to be the perfect situation to take out the Smart 16 and fly. It's a great backyard or even front yard ripper if you've got a bit of space. So let's see how it stacks up against the others in the market and we're going to look at outdoor performance rather than indoor. First up, how does it compare to the Diatone Roma F1 and the Firefly 1.6? These quads are in a slightly different class because they're 3 to 4S and run bigger motors, 1103 and 1202 respectively. 
Then you have the Flywoo Baby Nano and the iFlight Baby Nazgul. They're a little heavier and do spin bigger motors, but have a touch more weight to carry with the larger cell batteries. I found the stock performance of the Firefly 1.6 to be quite underpowered until I added higher KV motors, which eventually burnt out the ESC. You then have the Flywoo 1S Baby Nano and the iFlight Baby Nazgul, the 1S version at least. These are 1S quads and are more similar because they share the same 0802 motors, although slightly different KV. What I found with the Flywoo 1S Baby Nano is it was just quite underpowered given the 1S battery couldn't generate enough thrust to perform the different maneuvers. So is 2S the sweet spot? Well, yes and no. In the Nano segment, the Smart 16 at 2S finds the right power to weight ratio to provide you a decent flying quad. But you'd want to fly it, like I said before, in small outdoor spaces as opposed to the bigger, larger ones. But I think what we found from the Nanos is this is potentially the Goldilocks of all of them. Now, there's also some other options on the market. You could build your own quad with the Nali FPV Subatomic Series, and you can check out my video here, although that did end up in smoke. And I've also done a few videos on the Flywind Nano Quads. The 1S Firefly is here, and the Firefly 1.6 stock, or when I doubled the motor KV, is also here and here, respectively. 